Hello everyone, it's Joe from OnePageZen.com and today in this tutorial you're going to learn about the most important and widely used Linux commands. Now for this example I'm going to be demonstrating and explaining each of these commands in a Google Cloud Platform shell, but it should be noted that the commands will be the same regardless of whether you're running your application on AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Google Cloud Platform compute engine and I'm going to SSH into my virtual machine instance here. Now this machine is running WordPress, but it doesn't matter as long as your machine is running Linux. All right, so the first section of this tutorial is user permission commands. So the first command we're going to look at is the sudo command. Now the sudo command is used to run a specific command with root permissions. So for example, if I wanted to restart my Apache server, I could write Apache control restart. However, as you can see here, I do not have the required permissions to run that command. So what I could do is put sudo, uh, put sudo in front, Apache control and restart. And now you can see my Apache server restarted just fine. Now a variation of the sudo command is sudo dash I. And what that does is it changes you from your current user to a root user. So you can see here, I, I, my user switched from OPZ viral to root. So now every command I run as root will have root permissions. So instead of having to put s uh, sudo in front of the Apache control restart command, I can simply run Apache control restart start. And now you see here, my Apache server restarted it without any issues. All right, now the next uh, category of commands that we're going to run are the file and directory management commands. So the uh, first command we're going to run is the touch command. Now the touch command is used to create new files. So we're going to do touch home my file txt and what this command is going to do is it's going to create a file called myfile.txt so I can run that and now I'm going to use the echo command to insert some text into the myfile.txt file that we just created so I'm going to run echo uh, hello world my file txt and so what this did is this automatically inserted the text hello world into the file myfile.txt without actually having to open the file itself so i bet you're asking well how do we know that the text was actually inserted so what we can do is we can use the cat command to uh, check the contents of a file without having to open the file so i'm going to run cat home slash my file dot txt and what we see here is it returned to us hello world which is exactly the text that we just added to uh, my file dot txt great so uh, the next command we're going to run is the make directory command now the make directory command is used to obviously make directories so it's uh, abbreviated as mkdir and I'm going to make a directory called uh, my directory. And I'm going to make this directory inside of my home directory. Press enter. And now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the move command, which is abbreviated as MV, in order to in order to move the myfile.txt file that we created to move it into the my directory directory that we just created. So I'm going to run mv slash home slash my file dot txt home slash my directory. And so what that did is that moved my file dot txt 
into my directory. So the next thing we can do is we can move it back. So show you here, I'm going to move Now you can see here I'm putting in the current location of uh, my file.txt and then I'm going to put the location where I want it moved to and I just want it moved to the home directory. Press enter and there we go. Now the next command I'm going to run is the ls command. Now the ls command is used uh, to check the contents of a directory. So I could do ls home slash my directory and you can see here it's returning nothing and that's because my directory is currently empty. Remember we just moved uh, my file.txt into my directory and then in the following command we moved my file.txt back to the home directory. So for that reason my directory is currently empty. So the next command we're going to look at is the wget command. Now the wget command is used to download repositories uh, from a location on the internet. So I'm going to use the wget command in this example to download the certbot files. Now certbot, if you follow my other tutorials, is um, what we use uh, in many of the SSL related tutorials. So I'm going to do S, uh, wget um, run this and what that did is uh, that downloaded the certbot files. All right. So the next command we're going to look at is the find command. Now the find command is used to uh, search for files or directories. So I'm going to do find backslash type f name wpconfig.php. Now, if you are a WordPress user, you're obviously familiar with the wpconfig.php file, which is what we're going to look for in this example. So I'm going to press enter. And you can see here that our uh, wpconfig.php file is located in var slash www slash html, which is good to know. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for a directory, and we're going to look for our etc. directory. So I'm going to do find slash type d name, etc. And you can see here that our etc. directory is located in uh, user slash local. So there we go. The next thing we're going to look at is uh, the stat command. And the stat command is used to check default permission levels of files and directories. So in this case, I'm gonna use the stat command to check the default permissions of my file.txt. Uh, so I'm gonna run stat-c and home slash my file.txt and press enter. And you can see here that it returned the uh, default permission level of my file.txt, which is, as it shows, 644. Now we can also do the same thing with a directory. I can run stat c and home slash my directory. And see here, uh, the directory, the default permissions are 755. All right, so now that we know what the default permission levels are for the myfile.txt and my directory, we can change them if we need to. So to change them, we are going to uh, use the chmod command. So I'm gonna use the chmod command right now to change the default permission level of myfile.txt from 644 to 755. So I'm gonna do chmod. 755 slash home slash my file dot txt press enter and you can see here this uh, changed the permission level of my file dot t uh, my file dot txt to 755 and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the uh, default permission level of my directory to 777 so I can do chmod 
777 home slash my directory. And this changed uh, my directory, the permission level, to 777. So if we wanted to, uh, imagine that my directory contained a lot of files, and we also wanted those files to inherit those that same level of permission. What we could do is we could make this command recursive by doing chmod r, uh, chmod r 777, uh, my directory. And what this would do is it would make everything contained within that directory also inherit permission level of 777. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run the rm command. Now the rm command stands for remove, and it's used to delete files and directories. So I'm going to delete my myfile.txt file by using the rm command. I'm gonna run rm slash home slash myfile.txt, press enter, and I'm also going to delete my directory called my directory. So I'm going to do rm and I'm going to make it recursive so that it deletes all of the files contained within my directory as well. I'm going to do home slash my directory, press enter, and there we go. And that's it for this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future video updates. And don't forget to check out all of the cloud tutorials available at OnePageZen.com. Also, if you found this video interesting and want to explore even more Linux commands, check out the extended version of this tutorial at OnePageZen.com. There is a link to that tutorial in the description to this video. Thanks a lot for watching.